Hi, I welcome you for this lecture on block oscillations. In this lecture, I shall derive the expressions for the frequency and time period of block oscillations. I believe this lecture would make you understand the phenomenon of block oscillations in a better way. Block oscillation is an oscillation shown by electrons in a periodic potential when subjected to a constant external force. The constant external force can be applied to the electrons through electric or magnetic fields. For an electron in a periodic potential, the energy varies with the wave vector k as shown in the figure. The figure is a reduced zone scheme of energy dispersion of electron in a periodic potential. In this scheme, the energy dispersion is reduced to the first Brillouin zone. The first Brillouin zone is the region in the k space between minus pi by a and plus pi by a, where a being the lattice period or the lattice parameter of the crystalline solid. The energy dispersion in the reduced zone scheme is found to be useful when dealing with electron transition between the bands. Even in our present discussion of block oscillations, a little later, I shall be deriving a relation for the velocity of electrons in a band. At that time, I shall approximate the energy dispersion of electrons in the band to a cosine function as pointed out in the diagram. Coming back to this diagram, you can notice that the x-axis is the wave vector. When dealing with the physics of materials and that too a crystalline materials, the wave vector is a very important quantity. It is directly linked with the momentum of a particle through the relation h cross k. In other words, I can state that the wave vector is nothing but the momentum of a particle in units of h cross. The importance of wave vector lies in the fact that it holds the property of momentum of a particle in it. I guess this much of background knowledge is enough to carry out the derivation for the frequency and time period of block oscillations. Let's consider a situation that an electric field is applied to an electron of charge E. Then the force on the electron due to this applied electric field is given by F is equal to the charge of the electron times the applied electric field. With the basic knowledge in physics, we know that the force is the rate of change of momentum. Using this, the force relation can now be written as shown here. Further, as we have just learned that the momentum of a particle is given by h cross k, then replacing p with h cross k we get the force relation as this. Also, as the h cross is a constant, it can be taken out and the differentiation acts only on the wave vector k. Now, as a last step of rearrangement of terms, I will move the h cross on the left to the right. By doing so, I get the relation as this. This relation can be interpreted as the rate of change of the wave vector of the electron under an applied electric field. Now, my task is to solve this differential relation and find the time dependence on the wave vector k. The time dependence on the wave vector can be found in the following way. Just move dt on the left to the right and integrate dt between the limits 0 and t, where 0 being the initial time, that is the time at which the electric field is turned on, and t being the final time. On the left side, the corresponding limits on the wave vector are k of 0 and k of t, where k of 0 and k of t are the wave vectors at time instants 0 and t respectively. Performing this simple integration and plugging the limits, we get the result as shown here. This result that we have obtained on the wave vector is not for any particular electron, but an average of the wave vectors of the electrons present in the system. With this understanding that the result is an average, I can state that the initial wave vector at time t equal to 0 is 0. This is because before the application of electric field, the electrons move in random directions. Then the net velocity or its net momentum or the wave vector is 0. Hence their average values are 0 as well. So the initial wave vector of the electron at time t equal to 0 is 0. Then the wave vector of the electron under a constant applied external electric field at time t is simply this. This is an important result and I may use it in a little while in our derivation. To emphasize on its importance, I put this result in a box. Now let's look at the velocity of the electron and its dependence on the wave vector in a periodic potential. 
Remember, I am introducing the idea of periodic potential only here. In deriving the previous result on the wave vector of the electron, I did not consider the electron to be in a periodic potential. That result is not for an electron particularly in a periodic potential, but a general behavior of electron under a constant applied external electric field. Only now I introduce the idea of periodic potential. Before that, let me introduce on how a particle is viewed in quantum mechanics. A particle in quantum mechanics is viewed as a wave packet, which is a superposition of several waves of different frequencies and amplitudes. The velocity of a particle is the group velocity of such waves. We can determine the group velocity, which is the particle's velocity by the formula d omega by dk where omega is the angular frequency which can be related to the energy of the particle by E equal to h cross omega and k in the denominator is the wave vector. As omega, the angular frequency is related to the energy of the particle by E divided by h cross, the group velocity or the particle's velocity can now be written as this. But the energy of an electron in a band can be represented by a cosine function I use a cosine function of this form, where the capital A is a constant, small a is the lattice period or the lattice constant and k is the wave vector. With the energy of the electron in a band being this, the expression for its velocity in the band can be determined by replacing the energy E in the velocity expression above by the cosine function. By plugging the cosine function for the energy, we get the velocity as this. Carrying out the differentiation with respect to k, we get the velocity of the electron in a band as a function of the wave vector as this. Let me put this result also in a box to emphasize its importance. You may notice that there is a negative sign in the velocity expression. As the velocity is a vector quantity, the negative sign signifies that the electron's velocity is in an opposite direction. To get an insight on the direction of the velocity within the first Brillouin zone, for positive wave vectors that is between 0 and plus pi by a, the electron's velocity is negative and whereas for the negative wave vectors that is between 0 and minus pi by a, the electron's velocity is positive. The conclusion is, within the first Brillouin zone, the wave vector and the velocity of the electron face in opposite direction in this band. But the wave vector, when a constant electric field is applied, is not a constant, rather changes over time linearly. This time dependence of the wave vector we already have derived, but shown here again for an easy follow up. The velocity of the electron in a periodic potential with a cosine relation for the energy of the electron in the band is given by this. Now to this electron, when a constant electric field is applied, the wave vector of the electron changes linearly with time. So the velocity of the electron incorporating the wave vector changes can be given by this. And as you know that the velocity is the rate of change of displacement of the particle. So I replace V by dx by dt and we get this. This is just a differential relation. We can solve by standard techniques for the displacement of the particle. This is what we are going to see in the coming discussions. We have got the rate of change of displacement of the electron in a band as this. To solve for the displacement, first move dt on the left to the right. Then integrate dt between the time interval 0 and t. And on the left, the corresponding integral limits for the displacement being x of 0 and x of t. Carrying out the integration on the left and plugging the limits for the displacement we get this. Similarly, carrying out the integration on the right, we get this. The negative sign is because of the trigonometric sine function in the integrand. There are a few parameters that can be cancelled out on the right side. That cancellation we can carry out now to bring it down to a simpler form. The negative sign can be removed. A appears both in the numerator and the denominator. That can be cancelled out and also the h cross. Now it has come down to a simpler form and we can apply the time limits on the right. Applying the time limits, we get the expression for the displacement as this. Now the x of 0, which is the initial portion of the electron in the real space at time t equal to 0, k 
can be moved to the right. This x of 0 can be combined with a upon ee and produce a new constant which can be denoted by capital X of 0. This constant is so denoted just to mean that this is completely independent of time. So finally, the displacement of the electron in a periodic potential when a constant external electric field is applied is given by this relation. The only time dependence on the displacement of the electron is on the cosine function which is an oscillatory function in time t. So the angular frequency of oscillation of the electron in the band is identified to be this. It is denoted by omega b where the subscript b is just to mean that this is the block oscillation frequency. Once we have got the angular frequency of oscillation, the time period of its oscillation can be obtained through dividing 2 pi by the angular frequency of oscillation omega b. Plugging the obtained expression for omega b and with little simplification we get the time period of block oscillation as this. It is important to note that in the time period expression the numerator is just h the Planck's constant and not the h cross which we had been using from the beginning of this derivation. With this I am done with the mathematics of block oscillations. For observing the block oscillation there is a condition need to be met. The time period of block oscillation must be shorter than the mean collision time of electrons in the solid. This is a very important condition because only if the time period of oscillation is shorter, the electron could able to complete its oscillation without getting scattered. If the time period of oscillation is longer than the mean collision time, the electron before it completes an oscillation would get scattered and we cannot observe the block oscillation. So it is a must condition that the time period of block oscillation be shorter than the mean collision time of electrons. But when you look at the expression for the time period of block oscillation, plugging the typical values for the lattice constant A and the electric field E, we get the oscillation time period of the order of 10 power minus 12 seconds, whereas the typical mean collision time of electrons in a solid is of the order of 10 power minus 14 seconds. From these typical values, it is evident that the time period of block oscillation is longer by a few orders of magnitude than the mean collision time of electrons. So under normal circumstances, we cannot observe block oscillations. Then how can we observe the block oscillations? In order to observe the block oscillations, as I have already stated, the time period of block oscillations must be shorter than the mean collision time of electrons. But under normal circumstances, as we have just seen, this condition is not satisfied. So we need to find a way out to shorten the time period of block oscillations. By looking at the expression for the time period of block oscillations, we can notice that there are four parameters out of which two are fixed constant, the Planck's constant h and the electronic charge e, and the other two are not a fixed constants, the lattice constant a and the applied electric field E. But these non-fixed constant take up values depending on the experimental conditions. As both these non-fixed constants A and E appear in the denominator, in order to shorten the time period of oscillation, the product of AE must be large. We already have tried with a large electric field in our sample calculation. We cannot think of increasing the electric field any further. But we can think of increasing the lattice parameter A. For any normal solid, the lattice parameter is only of the order of angstrom, which we have already tried in our calculation. But to have a larger lattice parameter, we can think of super lattice structures. Super lattice structures are artificially made structures where an additional larger period is introduced in a periodic structure. The lattice constant of super lattice structure can be of the order of 100 angstroms. To better understand the super lattice structure, I have shown here a diagram of a super lattice structure. In the diagram, the alternate blue and red color layers form the large periodic structure and the individual blue and red colored layers are crystalline and have nearly the same lattice constant. The super lattice structure as the individual layers shown in blue and red color are very thin and of the order of a few nanometer thick, they are basically quantum wells. 
In the quantum well structure, the conduction and valence bands of electrons will have subbands. As the electrons undergo block oscillations, they could tunnel between the subbands. This tunneling of electrons is similar to a Zener tunneling phenomenon. In a superlattice structure, there will be a coherent superposition of block oscillations and the tunneling of electrons between the subbands. Since tunneling phenomenon is also taking place during this oscillation, this is often addressed as Zener block oscillations. With this, I end up my presentation on block oscillations or as I lastly mentioned, Zener block oscillations. For preparing this presentation, I have referred the following books and websites. I believe these books and websites would certainly help you to learn more on block oscillation and some related phenomena. Thank you for the valuable time you spent here. Bye-bye.